Stephen W. Sears, author of Landscape Turned Red, The Battle of Antietam, states, Of all the days on all the fields where American soldiers have fought, the most terrible by almost any measure was September 17, 1862. The battle waged on that date, close by Antietam Creek at Sharpsburg in western Maryland, took a human toll never exceeded on any other single day in the nation's history. So intense and sustained was the violence a man recalled, that for a moment in his mind's eye the very landscape around him turned red. In the summer of 1862, Confederate General Robert E. Lee's army was making its way north through Maryland. On September 17th, the Union and Confederate forces met in Sharpsburg, Maryland. The battle opened in Miller's Cornfield when Union General Joseph Hooker began firing on Stonewall Jackson's men. Hooker recalls, Every stalk in the northern and greater part of the field was cut as closely as could have been done with a knife, and the slain lay in rows precisely as they had stood in their ranks a few moments before. It was never my fortune to witness a more bloody, dismal battlefield. Meanwhile, in the sunken road, Union General W. H. French's division battled with General D. H. Hill's troops. The fighting was so gruesome that the battlefield would later be known as Bloody Lane. Southeast of Sharpsburg, General Ambrose Burnside was attempting to cross a narrow bridge over Antietam Creek. The attempt lasted for four hours before the Union troops crossed the bridge and drove back the Georgians. At the end of the day, nearly 23,000 soldiers had died, the most casualties of any single day in the war. Federal losses were numbered at 12,410, and Confederate losses numbered at 10,700. Captain Emery Upton of the 2nd U.S. Infantry states, I have heard of the dead lying in heaps, but never saw it till this battle. Whole ranks fell together. After the battle, Lee's army retreated south across the Potomac, and the Confederates' first northern campaign was ended. One enslaved onlooker, Hillary Watson, recalls the battle firsthand. The shells soon begun flying over the house and around here, and while I was out in the yard, there was one that appeared like it went between our house and the next and busted. I could see the blue blaze flying, and I jumped as high as your head. Although the Battle of Antietam was not regarded as a victory for the Union, it instilled enough confidence in Lincoln to proceed with the unveiling of a massively important document. On September 22, 1862, Lincoln issued a preliminary emancipation proclamation, which read, that on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or any designated part of a state, with the people whereof, shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever, free. Despite the fact that the battle was a draw militarily, the aftermath was a tremendous political victory for the Union. Not only was Lincoln encouraged to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, one of the single most important documents in American history, but the Confederates also suffered a substantial political loss. Because of Lee's failure to invade the North, Great Britain decided to postpone the recognition of the Confederate government. If the rebels had Great Britain as an ally during the war, the result may have been completely different. <laughs>